Hi, and welcome to lesson 10.1 on comparing data displayed in dot plots. Okay, so in this activity, we're analyzing dot plots. And you could use dot plots to analyze a data set, especially with respect to its center and spread. And you learned about center and spread in sixth grade, but I will remind you about some of that in this lesson. So, uh, what we got is people once used body parts for measurements. For example, an inch was the width of a man's thumb. So uh, about an inch, about an inch right there. Uh, and in, tw in the 12th century, King Henry I of England stated that a yard was the distance from his nose to his outstretched thumb. And they have a little illustration right there. And the dot plot shows the different lengths in inches of the yards, in quote, for students in a seventh grade class. So they took from their nose to the outstretched thumb. And each of these, uh, one student had 28 inches. Another student had 29. Two students had 29. Uh, one had 30. And so on. The longest was 35 inches from nose to thumb. And as we look at this data here, uh, describe the shape of the dot plot. So this is the dot plot. Are the dots evenly distributed or grouped on one side? Well, it looks like they're fairly evenly spread out with the most in the middle. So there's none of them that has eight right here, and then it just goes none, something like that. For the most part, what, the highest frequency is three, and they're kind of grouped somewhere in the middle here. So that's the shape of it. Uh, are they evenly distributed? That would be a discussion of the shape. Okay, describe the center of the dot plot. What single dot would best represent the data? Well, the most data occurs at 31 inches. That's the highest frequency right there. The center, with an equal number of dots on each side, is around 31.5. So if I go to, here's 31, 31.5. If I count, uh, maybe this one here. Uh, and then to the right of it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here they're talking about that's the center right there because there's an equal number of dots above it and below it. Describe the spread of the dot plot. Are there any outliers? Okay, so the data values start at 28 and end at 35. And we can see that here, 28 to 35. Most of the data is between 29 and 34. So between here, that's where most of the data is, and that's the spread of that. Uh, 28 and 35 do not look like outliers. And outliers are data points that are really just way far out, like maybe if you had something at 15 or you had something at 45, something like that. Those might be outliers. Uh, let's reflect on this. So calculate the mean, median, and range of the data of the dot plot. To calculate the mean, that is the average. You have to add all of these. You have to add 28 plus 29 plus 29 plus 30 plus 30.5 plus 30.5 plus 31 plus 31 plus 31. All of these data points, you have to add them up and you have to divide by how many data points you have. And that would be the average. I have that at 31.6. The median is 31.5, and we actually already saw that here because the median was that dot right there because there were 10 data points above and there were 10 data points below. So if they're that specific dot, that one right there is the median, 31.5. The range, that's the maximum number minus the middle number, uh, uh, max minus the minimum number, so that's 35 minus 28. And I have these little notes right here that you should include. Mean is the average, median is the middle number, and the range is the max minus the min. Okay, so comparing dot plots visually. You, compare, you can compare dot plots visually using various characteristics such as center, spread, and shape. So putting this all together, we have dot plots that show the heights of 15 high school basketball players and the heights of 15 high school softball players. Softball players are here. Basketball players are here. So visually compare the shapes. So when we're looking for shape, this is what we're thinking about. We're thinking about, well, all the data for softball is five foot six or less. Okay. Basketball, most of the data is five foot eight and greater. All right. As a group, the softball players are shorter than the basketball players. 
So that's the shape of the dot plots that help tell us that. Visually compare the centers. Uh, the data is centered around five foot four for softball and five foot eight for basketball. This means the most common height for softball players is five feet four inches and for basketball players five feet eight, eight inches. And let's talk about the spreads. So the softball spread is from four foot 11 to five foot six. So that's the range right there is the spread. And uh, I guess maybe I would write uh, range. Uh, and five foot two to six foot, five foot two to six foot for the basketball players. There's a greater spread in the heights of the um, basketball players. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, for our your turn question, it asks you to visually compare the dot plot of uh, heights of field hockey players to the dot plots for softball and basketball players. And here's field hockey, and we have softball and basketball. So first, you're asked to talk about the shape, compare the shape. So it looks like it goes down, up, and back down. This general shape. And this one kind of does, but there's a big gap in between here. And yeah, it kind of like tails off and swoops up again. This one goes, uh, is down, up, and down. It's closer. I would call it more similar to this than this. So that's why I said both dot plots have a similar shape for field hockey and softball. The centers. Center of field hockey dot plot is less than the center for softball or basketball players. So the center looks like it's five foot two right here, and this is five foot four and five foot eight. Now the spread. Spread dot plots for field hockey players and softball players have a similar spread. We're talking five foot six to just under five foot, and this is also five foot six to just under five foot. So that's the comparison of shape, center, and spread. Next, we are going to compare dot plots numerically. You can also compare the shape, center, and spread of two dot plots numerically by calculating values related to the center and spread. Remember the, uh, that outliers can affect your calculations. So, and, and, I, and I'm going to get to that uh, a little bit later on this. So, uh, numerically, compare the dot plots of the number of hours a class of students exercise each week to the number of hours students play video games each week. Okay, so exercise. Got it? video games. Compare the shapes. The dot plots appear almost opposite. Yeah, th this is high here and it's uh, high at this point right here. Uh, the dot plots show that most students exercise less than four hours, but most play video games more than six hours. Okay, so most more than four here, more than six. Compare the centers of the dot plots by finding the medians. Okay, and I, I like this uh, this part uh, this uh, method here. So the method uh, so 2.5 hours is the median for the exercise 2.5. Uh, so it looks like this probably is the median one two three four five six one two three four five six seven. Hmm. Okay, I guess so. So this is about the median right here 2.5. Oh no, that's three. So 2.5, yeah, 2.5 would have to be a little bit lower right here. So 2.5 right there. And what we would do to find that 2.5 exactly is we would take zero, I'll, I'll line them up here just to do it one time. Uh, zero, one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 three. Uh, that's five. Uh, that's seven, seven, and 12. 12. So you line them up and then you count what we are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 of them. So if I go 7 in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, and then there's 7 there. So that means the median is right there. And you learn in sixth grade when you have an even amount of numbers, you have to take the average of the two right here. So 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3. And since there's two numbers, you divide it by 2. Uh, that's Five divided by two, which is 2.5, and that's how we get the 2.5 right there. Okay, which uh, 
which is six and a half hours less than the median of nine. So they calculated here that the median here is nine. So the middle is nine right there by listing all the numbers like I did up here, listing them all and finding the middle number is nine. So compare the spreads of the dot plots by calculating the ranges. The range is the big minus small. So it's 12 minus zero. So this is 12. Okay, for exercise, it's 12. And for video games, it's 14 minus zero, and that's 14. Okay, on this last your turn exercise, calculate the median and range of the data of the dot plot. Then compare the results of the dot plot to the exercise in example two. Okay, uh, oh, for exercise. Okay, so uh, the median is six. So we can see here, somewhere around here is the middle number uh, six. So what you have to do is you have to put a, what, one, four, four, five, 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 six, 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 seven, seven, eight, and 11. You line them all up there. I'm getting all these dots here uh, as that data. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's gonna be six. That's the median is six hours and the range is 10 because 11 minus one is 10. The median is greater than the median for exercise. So as we look at this and compare it to exercise, the median was, oh wait, no. The median was 2.5 right there and the median here is six. And the range is 10 and the range here was 12 for exercise. So the median is greater than the median for exercise correct and the range is less than the range for exercise because that's 10 and the other one was 12 and that's what you got to know about all of this dot all these dot plots and um, comparing data displayed in dot plots including median uh, range and mean shapes of dot plots and all that wonderful stuff